Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is by far one of my favorite games of all time. I've gone into the depths of this game quite a lot in my videos when it comes to the video on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door or something like I believe my Desert Island video had Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door as well. I had made a joke in that where, you know, I said, hey, let's remaster The Thousand Year Door. Let's actually give it the treatment that it deserves. Well, we know specifically that Nintendo watches my videos now too. So, the remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, I believe, is not only one of the best remakes of all time, but it's just a good, solid game as well. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is just one of those games that has been numerously expensive nowadays. I mean, we're talking upwards of $200 for a full, complete inbox copy. Mine's not. I like telling this story because, uh, you know, I have quite a few games that are worth a pretty solid penny in my collection, but Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is probably one of my more rare ones if I had to say so. Um, I love telling this story, but back in the day, uh, we had a retro game store that me and my dad would always walk into on every Sunday. We would eat Chinese uh, next door, and then we would zip on over to uh, this place called the Gaming Warehouse. And that's where a lot of uh, my retro games that I bought, uh, specifically for the GameCube or the Wii at the time, uh, came from. Uh, one day, I think it was after we ate Chinese food, it was at night, I had 20 bucks saved up, I believe, and I walked out of the store with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, the Sonic Mega Collection, as well as the Mega Man Anniversary Collection. And at the time, my dad had gotten kind of mad at me for purchasing this game because he kept telling me to put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. And I was like, no, we had just beaten Super Paper Mario on the Wii, and we had loved that game to death. So that's why I grabbed this one, thinking it would be along the same terms. My dad, however, thought differently. He thought it was basically going to be the exact same game as the one on the Wii. Um, he was wrong. This became a game that me and him, we would play uh, pretty annually. We would try to beat, you know, the pit of 100 trials. We would try to uh, beat the game or get to a certain place. Um, and it just became kind of a thing that me and my dad would do over time. And it just kind of became one of my favorite games of all time. What's also kind of special about this game in particular for me is that this was one of my first RPGs that I ever played. I don't really recall a ton of role-playing games. Um, I think I was kind of confused when I first played this game because, you know, it's kind of got the traditional Mario platforming, but then all of a sudden when you hit an enemy or you jump on an enemy, it goes into a totally different experience. And I thought that was kind of cool at the time, but then I realized later down the road, once I discovered other games, like the other Paper Mario game that came before this on the N Nintendo 64, uh, you have Super Mario RPG, you have the Mario Luigi series, which I discovered once I got an, a Nintendo 3DS at the time. I was one of those weird kids that didn't have a DS, I had a Game Boy. You have other great role-playing games like the Final Fantasy series, the Dragon Quest series, and even more recent releases like Undertale, for example. Just RPGs are some of the best video games that you can play, in my opinion. Uh, you get your money worth out of them because they're long. Uh, yes, sometimes they can be grindy in people's opinions, but I always enjoyed RPGs, and I can say that's all because of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door's influence on just my childhood, I guess. Over time, however, this game just became extremely rare. I, I don't know why. I, maybe because it didn't sell well. I, I believe it did. Bestseller right there. But, I mean... Like I said, mine is not complete in box, so I think it'll still fetch for a pretty penny, but not as much as something like a full complete. All the manuals, all the uh, inserts, all that kind of good stuff. This year, however, I can't believe that I'm saying this, but last year there was a Nintendo Direct and the final tease was a remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. This was such a big deal for Paper Mario fans and for RPG fans because, you know, when it comes to Paper Mario the series as a whole, it's been on this trajectory that's going downhill slightly. It started with the Wii game. Now, while I love the Wii game, it did take a lot of those elements from The Thousand Year Door and the original Nintendo 64 game and it completely stripped them. 
We then had an abomination of a 3DS game, Sticker Star, which completely took everything that an RPG could have been and it made it not an RPG at the same time. Then we had the one on the Wii U, Color Splash, which I don't even think I beat. I just kind of got bored halfway through because the RPGs elements didn't really matter you had on the gamepad where it was like a cards and you had to swipe up and color them in it was a bit frustrating and weird I, I don't really like it that much of a game I'm I might give it a shot in the future but I think that's one of the worst Paper Mario games color splash we then recently on the N Nintendo Switch had the Origami King which I never even touched I never played it I never beat it um mostly because I felt like it was going to be a waste of money. Um, Sticker Star disappointed. Color Splash disappointed. The Origami King definitely looked like it would be a disappointment for me. Mostly because the RPG-ness of shuffling tiles and stuff like that it looked like in the trailers. It just didn't look appealing to me in my opinion. That being said, in that game specifically, there are things that looked to bring a brighter hope for the future for Paper Mario. There was one part where this bob would follow you around like a partner. Another one, I believe, a Toadwood review said. So, you know, it looked like they were embracing what the original two games brought to the table. And I don't think that's any more clear when they announced this remake. For me, remaking The Thousand Year Door, I'm mostly thinking about for other people. Uh, mostly because not a lot of people are going to be able to fork over... 200 300 dollars for a gamecube copy so you know remaking this game just makes sense from other fans standpoint for me myself it makes sense i wanted a way to have this game be playable on newer hardware and with newer graphics however i believe they should have remade the older paper mario the very first one on the nintendo 64 that one is in dire need of a remake in my opinion Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door on the GameCube still looks amazing graphically wise. I, I think that's what brought in the format that everyone knows Paper Mario as it is today. It still looks really, really good in my opinion. The N64 game, however, does not in my opinion. It has not aged that well. So I think they should have remade the N64 game in my opinion. However, it's amazing to just be holding in my hand a remake of The Thousand Year Door. This was something that fans and myself have been begging for for forever. And to actually be holding it in my hands, it's amazing. I really, really like the outline and the packaging on this game as well. It's got this red outline like a book cover. It really makes it look special. You have Paper Mario and all of his party members and Bowser popping out of the map. You have the stage, uh, you know, I just really think that Nintendo knew that fans would appreciate this and think it was special, so they went all out on it. Looking on the back, it says a comical adventure that pops off the pages. And you can see how a lot of these uh, screenshots, you know, there's no comparisons to the original game, but it's, it's just, it's really amazing that, you know, this is a thing. I mean... Seriously. Looking on the inside, however, no manual, but this is the treasure map that Mario acquires uh, in the game. It's all blacked out, um, brown, um, none of the areas are popped up. I thought it maybe would have been a little cool to kind of see, you know, uh, when you unlock a new area in the game, the map pops up. So maybe all the areas could have been popped up. That would have been really cool. What's weird about this release in particular, though, is that Nintendo's treating this like it's a brand new Paper Mario adventure, not a remake. Because usually Nintendo, when they remake a game, they call it the HD version of this. Kind of like with Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD. Um, and it's not something that's specifically just because it released on the N Nintendo Switch. We've had it recently with the Metroid Prime remake. Um, that was called HD, I believe. We also had the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. So... I don't know why they decided to call this just the Thousand Year Door because now um, when you look up this game, you have to be very specific of, oh, is it the remake or is it the 2024 edition or are you trying to look up the uh, original edition that released in 2004? Which I think that's kind of cool too to uh, think about that this released 10 years apart from this one on the dot, uh, 2004, 2024, 
I just think that's kind of cool. So the main reason I guess I'm talking about this remake in particular is because I haven't beat it yet. Um, I know that's that's kind of weird because this game you could easily pry fly through, but I like to take my time with video games. I like to really engage myself and engross myself in the world. So that way, um, if I'm to give my thoughts on a game, they're kind of the definitive thoughts for that time. I don't rush through anything. Um, I'm at the fourth world, I believe. But so far, this is just an amazing, amazing remake. Yes, uh, some fans have criticized this game in particular because while the original runs at 60 frames a second, this runs at 30 frames a second. Are you able to tell? No. I just think that uh, if you have been wanting to play The Thousand Year Door um, and you can't get a hold of the original, this is by far one of the best remakes that has come out recently that I can think of, and it's one that pays close uh, attention to the original. Um, it's definitely worth it in every way. And you know, if you're like me and you're a sucker for the original version of the game, especially with the original version of the music, um, because the Thousand Year Door reorchestrated the entire soundtrack, it even um, during specific moments and battles, if you're in a different world, the music changes up completely different, which is a really nice touch. However, there is a badge that you can buy in this game for I think one or two coins and you can equip it. It doesn't cost any badge power points and it has all the original sounds of the game. So that's really nice. I just think that if you have not played The Thousand Year Door and you're looking for a way to play it, the remake is by far one of the best ways to do it, in my opinion. It's worth it in every way and every penny. Um, the original, it'll always be there, but I'm really enjoying my time with the remake so far. The added things that they've added to it, um, the colors, they just pop in the world. Paper Mario has never been more paper than in this game in particular. I highly recommend it so far. That's just my basic thoughts. Um, I'm hoping to maybe make a video in the future discussing my thoughts on the remake in more in-depth. But so far, it's a very faithful remake. There's nothing that's changed too much that I see. Um, it's basically just the thousand-year door with better graphics and new orchestrated music. Nothing more, nothing less.